Hey everyone, Sean B. Martin here, based on a recent episode of Earheart, where Elaine and Ron were talking about Korra, which is the follow-up to Avatar, The Last Airbender. Uh, they were talking about the flashback sequences that have been happening in the episodes, and I wanted to get my hands on them and manipulate them and see what I could see. So I have attained the three flashback sequences and put them into my video editor, and we're going to jog our way through them. So, let's go back to the beginning. This is the very first flashback from episode four. Uh, this is after Korra has collapsed after she's been attacked and she has this vision. Uh, this is Sokka. This is the first one we see. Um, I'm pretty, I mean, I mean, I'm gonna say who these people are. I'm 90% certain that I know who each of them are. Uh, I'm 90% certain this is Sokka. I don't know who else it would be. Move ahead, there is Toph and I guess from this flashback, we are learning that Toph was the first head of the prison, or the uh, the police force, I guess, is what I mean. I don't know why I confused uh, Bolin with a jail warden at first, but uh, police chief. So that's probably what Toph was doing. And then move ahead. This is Aang. There's no way this is Tenzin. The timeline does not fit. This has got to be Aang. Also, he's bald, and I just, I this has got to be Aang. And he's so he is sitting in what appears to be a courtroom. We're gonna see better views of that uh, later. And this has got to be the bad guy. Uh, we know him only by name. He was a, a terrorist who was doing something to uh, Republic City long before Korra came along. His name is y Yakon or Yakoni. I forget how they've pronounced it in the series, but it is. Uh, he is the bad guy. It's got to be him, right? Right? All right. And then uh, the final shot of this flashback is Aang in full attack position, and I don't know what he's doing. He's attacking. Then we have a flashback from episode six. Here is, uh, this is after, you can see it here, this is after Korra is knocked out of the arena by the Separatists who are going to remove the powers from the team who's won the match. And here's the flashback. So there's Aang and Toph together, and Toph is is telling him something, angrily. The next shot is of, this is what I'm assuming to be Yakon again, and uh, this is the courtroom I'm talking about. Aang is sitting behind him. Uh, Yakon, I'm assuming, is in court because he's been captured, but he does not look um, defeated. Notice he's got a big stupid grin on his face. I think that he, whatever happened here, did not go well for our heroes. I think it went well for him. So he's smiling. Next shot, we've got this. And this is the only thing that I'm not really... Is that Yakon as well? That This is the only person who appears in these things that I'm not really sure who that is. And then uh, he disappears. And then we get Aang standing in the street in front of someone who we can't tell who it is. Uh, but he's got hair. He's got a lot of hair, so I don't think it's that guy. That guy we've been looking at. And then it fades to angry, angry Aang. Not, not Avatar angry Aang. He's on the Avatar state, but he's angry. <laughs> and then, the final sequence is from the most recent episode. This is episode 8. It opens on this guy again, who I'm assuming is your cone. It does this cool fisheye lens thing right here. And then he looks surprised, so maybe he's not so happy anymore. Then we get Sokka looking uh, very surprised and perhaps he is under attack. Uh, something bad is happening. Then we get Toph, she is attacking. And I'm assuming these are all from the same scene because everyone's dressed the same. I don't know why they would break it up. There's the, there's the uh, courtroom again. Toph is doing something. Uh, Yakon does not look that upset. There is someone sitting at the table with him who I don't know who it is. And then behind Yakon, who is obviously bloodbending Toph, is Aang trying to do his part. And apparently he's having trouble, as well as if you look at the scene behind him, it looks like everyone is panicking just a little bit. So my assumption is that this entire room has come under the attack of a bunch of bloodbenders. And that's where we end. Those are all the flashbacks that have been shown so far. Uh, feel free to put it together your own analysis. I'm interested in what people think about this. It's a very interesting little 
gimmick to put into the episodes, these flashbacks of the past life. Thank you for watching, and uh, stay tuned on this channel for an actual full response to Earheart number eight. Thanks for watching.